You were very upset at me as to why I purchased it. <laughs> Remember all that? That's usually how it goes. First of all, I want to say thank you very much for being one of those cool, supported wives that allows us to spend the money on the vehicles and not have to hide it from you. <laughs> so I do appreciate that because that makes it a lot easier. Welcome to really Sam's cool. Garage, presented by NH Oil Undercoating. On this episode of Sam's Garage. Sam installs a new throttle cable and gas pedal in the Chevy Hemi truck project. Doug shows Sam how to detail and polish a car like they did in the old days. Sam and his lovely assistant prepare to fire up the brothers Chevy Hemi truck project and then the duo takes a step back and walks around the project, admiring all their hard work. Sam installs a new low car performance throttle cable, pedal, and transmission shifter in the Chevy Hemi truck project. Low car shifter is also a perfect match for that American powertrain transmission. Continuing on with our brother's truck project this week, we're going to be addressing the low car situation here. Now, I first had a small block Chevy 350 when I got this truck with a Chevy 350 transmission in it. And this nice low car shifter was bolted right onto the transmission. In our case, we're gonna ditch it for a low car manual shifter. But I have to finalize my fuel injection, so I'm gonna do it with a low car pedal, cable, and sniper bracket system. That way, I got throttle, everything is done under the hood, then I can continue on with my cooling system, AC, and knock out that transmission. The Super Sniper requires a linkage like this to actuate both throttles. The linkage was up here, but this was getting in the way. So what we did was we moved the linkage down here to two holes. That way the low car fitting for the, the carburetor will work just fine. Now this is where I had to cut the low car piece right here. No problem because I can still hook up my springs right there. So when you guys are doing this, make sure that you have a full sweep. If you notice, I put the bracket on the front throttle body instead of the rear throttle body because if I had put it here, there would be too much of a bind here. And even though that spring is strong, in some cases it could hang the throttle open. We don't want that. So now what we're going to do is go in with our cable. We're going to adjust it, cut it, make sure it's the right length. When you guys do this, you have to make sure to pull out the inner cable, install your outer cable, then go in with your inner cable, finalizing it, cutting it, so that you don't make the mistake of cutting this with this inside cable in it, because now you've got yourself a phone call to low card and purchasing a new inner cable. The good thing is that it'll actually piece it together so you can buy a new one in case you make that mistake. Okay, so you see that everything is hooked up. I got a nice streamlined route from the firewall to the bracket. That's gonna no cause no binding here. I got my springs on the back throttle body on the bracket because there's no room here. It gets in the way of everything. When I install these low car cables, that's what I like to do is put my cable as far in as I can here, put this piece inside as far as I can screwing it in, and in that way, you can always move everything back, okay? Now, Julie, go ahead and actuate it. So that's full throttle, but what's important is inside the vehicle, when you go full throttle, that pedal should hit a stop, okay? Whether it's the carpet, something you installed there, you want the stop to stop the pedal and not the tension on the cable. And what that'll do over time is it'll create a looseness right where the Allen is, or it could even break or stretch the cable. We don't want that. We want the cable to do its job. We want the stop to do its job. We want everything to do their job so that nothing is compromised and shortens its life. I'm gonna go inside. She's gonna come outside. I'm gonna move the pedal down so that 
when she tells me I'm full throttle and I've hit the floor, I'm gonna tighten it right there. The beauty about the low car pedal, it's got splined mounting point on it, so you can almost 360 move that, both the pivot that actuates the cable and the pedal to the floor. That wasn't too bad. I love installing low car performance products because they go so well, they think of everything engineered perfect with infinite adjustability. Worked out pretty good. I love the way that the setup looks. Now it's gonna be a little bit weird driving this thing with these big feet and those little pedals so close to each other. It's gonna be almost as weird as driving a 32 Ford where the steering column goes in the middle and your feet on either side. Very weird. It's coming along really good. Stay tuned as we continue with our brother's truck Chevy Hemi project. Welcome back to Sam's Garage, presented by NH Oil Undercoating. Sam and Doug get ready to completely detail the Celine Mustang. To finish things off, they polish the car and apply a ceramic coating to bring out that deep shine. Well, this is the week we finished everything up on Doug Celine, and we're about to polish it up. I'm going to do most of the work. He's going to give most of the tips. We're going to make this thing look really good by the end of the day. Yeah, you know, I was thinking when you said we're going to polish it up, I was going to say, this is when I get to watch you polish it up. <laughs> yeah, yep, that's what I'm going to do. So we've got it all cleaned up. We washed it. We're going to go through and do a one-step polish on it. Then we're going to put a nice ceramic wax over it put some tire shine on the wheels, do the vacuum on the inside, and get this thing ready to go back to Oklahoma. I think we need to go through, like you said, with the clay bar. Like there's a spot right here. Yeah, no, I think we need to clay bar some of it, yeah. Yeah, what the clay bar does is it pulls all the imperfections out. It works really well. Just little spots like this, but there's a lot of little areas in here. You can see all of this type of stuff. We'll just start clay barring. Wow, it's as if you waxed it. Yeah, it, it just pulls those little, surface imperfections on it, out. All right, Doug, so after the clay bar, what should they do next? What I like to do is I'll just get some swirl remover. It's just a little bit heavier compound onto it, and what it does, it'll just take any type of little imperfections. What can happen is if you have hard water, the hard water will actually leave hard water spots, and you want to get all of that off. A swirl remover works extremely well for it. You want to make sure that you've got plenty of your rubbing compound onto it on your swirl remover. Put it in, rub it out, and what it'll do is it puts very, very light surface. I don't want to call them scratches, but it removes it. It's a little heavier compound. And then after that, you want to go with a lighter one onto it, polish it out really good, and then it's ready for your wax. One of the things when I'm using a, a random orbital polisher, uh, especially if it's a plug-in, is make sure that I would take the line and I'll run it right over the top of me when I'm getting ready to do it. Then I'm ready to start polishing. The other little tip is make sure you do small sections. A lot of mistake guys will make when they're polishing the cars is they'll try to do too much surface. Do one area, make it look right, then move on to the next area. You want to make sure that the wax doesn't have too long to cure because it can become very difficult to take off. It's a lot of work when you do this, so sometimes you just may want to take a break and if you just do sections, you can come back the next day. Works really well that way. As you can see, it's a beautiful shine now. Then it's ready for the wax. So what we're doing right now is we're just putting the layer of wax on. Let me get a little more. You're a real good assistant, Sam. Thanks. I want you to know that. I appreciate that. All right, so how long are you gonna let that sit before you well, take Well, you know it what I'm gonna do, Sam, is I'm gonna put a nice little coat on it here. Then I'm gonna probably let it set three to five minutes, touch it, make sure it's, it's nice and dry. You don't wanna, once again, try to pull it off when it's too wet. What are we gonna use to wipe it off with? Nice, clean rag. And make sure, guys, when you're setting your rags down, you know where you're setting them. I've seen more than one person set it down, throw it on the ground, they pick up a little rock into it, they start wiping, and they suddenly scratch their paint real bad. And all that work real is careful. gone. It's gone. Yep. It's gone. And now you've got to do paint corrections, and that's a real son of a gun. And then when you're putting tire shine on your car, I like to put tire shine on at night, so that way it's nice and dry. By the time you get there in the morning, it won't splatter all over the side of the car. Or wipe it off after you've wiped it on. That way you won't have any residue. I want to say thank you to Doug for letting me watch him do such a great job making the Celine look beautiful. You know, it's nice that the old man can help once in a while. 
I want to apologize to his doctor for making him work, and I'm sure he's going to charge him a surcharge. Yeah, and I'm going to send him the bill. <laughs>
so exciting to hear. This was the engine we built on season eight. It's a full Hemi rebuild. It was just a stock rebuild. So even though it looks like it makes a thousand horsepower, it only makes 350. But don't worry because next season, we're gonna be changing out the short block to a 392 full forged assembly with SCAT internals in it, built by Livernoy Motorsports Engineering. So yes, I do have to pull it out one more time. And yes, Julie, you'll have to help me one more time. But that's okay, 10 times, we're it's a charm. Now. There yeah. you go. This project is almost at a close. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Sam's Garage, presented by NHOU. Sam and Julie walk around the Brothers Chevy Hemi truck project to review all the hard work by the team. The 49 Ford body sits perfectly on the 99 Chevy S10 frame and mated with the Gen 3 Hemi engine, this truck is one of a kind. Welcome back to the Brothers Chevy Hemi project. This is pretty much a wrap. There is still some stuff I have to do off air but Julie and I will handle that no problem like we did everything else, right? Yeah. Except for the front windshield. That glass was pretty bad. Yeah, that was not easy. It was easy. very, very bad. Yeah. But the front glass with the crew went really easy. Of course it did. Of course it did. Everything that you guys see came from Brothers Truck Parts. You guys can build yourself a truck from scratch like you saw Julie and I do, along with some help from my brothers. And you can build your whole truck out of the catalog. They have everything, the glass, the seals. I do have some seals to do around the door still. For the most part, it turned out pretty good, didn't it? It's come a long way from when it first got here. I like the Nardo Gray. I want to say thank you to Jimmy and all the guys there at a very special Mako that I have here locally that paints a lot of my cars. They did a very good job on this truck. It was a whole bunch of body work. But that Hemi that we had laying around yeah. that we rebuilt with all the hardware you saw on season eight, why not? Yeah, it looks awesome. It does look awesome, doesn't it? Not only does it look awesome, but it's never been done before, right? Yeah. So here we have a Gen 3 late model Hemi 5.7 liter. I want to say Forrest Abel's mechanic, fellow longtime friend of mine, fabricator. If it wasn't for him in designing and cutting that mid plate to adapt the Holly Sniper twin plate on top of the Holly Sniper Terminator air intake, this would have never worked. That's not the first time for us to save us out no, of a sticky it's not. situation. Got the dual sniper setup from Holly. Very cool system. The MSD ignition box also from Holly. Fired the truck up with no worries, mm -hmm. right? Didn't have to hook up a laptop to it, didn't have to do any of that stuff. Went to Summit Racing, got the black hoses, matched everything. These up. are really nice. Got the halos for the running lights, just mm -hmm. like your daytime running lights in today's cars. But then when you turn the turn signal on, they go from orange to white, yeah. just like the new cars It gives cars you a do. lot of options with the lights. Absolutely does. It's really cool. Being that it's a five-speed from American Powertrain, that TKX, for me, you know, if I could have every car in my lineup. Yeah, it's lineup, kind of your favorite. Got to have a five-speed, right? Yeah. The low car cable, bracket and pedal mm -hmm. worked out really well with the dual sniper setup. And you can see, always good to have a fuel pressure gauge on your vehicle, especially when you're having a diagnosis like we had to do. The cold case radiator, fan and setup worked out really nice. You know, you guys, you live in your truck or car. So if you want to make it nice, you have to start with the interior first then do the rest of it because that's where you live mostly. The seat looks really well. It just makes such a huge difference. And the door panels also. I mean, we pulled this thing in and out a lot before it was running and it wasn't the best place to sit. This looks really nice. I do have a bedwood kit coming from Brothers Truck Parts. Now this bed has a special little deal that the guy made before I got it, which is this little cradle build a box, do a bunch of stuff under here, and make it cool. That's what it's like, guys, when you're building a project car like this. It takes time, it takes a lot of effort. There's gonna be times where you're gonna pull out the engine maybe 10 times, but it's okay, because once it's done running and looking the way it does to where it's completed, and all your work was not for nothing, it's well worth it. You do this, it's kind of a project for life because Eventually, you'll get an itch to do something different, and that's fine. You take it, you put a different engine in it, you can restyle it, tune it differently. There's nothing wrong with that. Make it yours. So I want to say thank you. I want to say thank you to Brothers Trucks and Holly for making this project happen. I hope you guys are inspired. If you have any questions, you can go to info at samsgaragetv.com. If you guys want to build a truck just like this, go to brotherstrucks.com, and you'll be able to get all the parts that we got for your truck, whether it's from a 49 all the way up to a late model truck, you guys can get what you need from Brothers Truck Parts. 
Be sure to check out Sam's Garage on these other media platforms. Send us questions and feedback to info at samsgaragetv.com. Sam was able to wrap up the throttle cable and gas pedal in the Chevy Hemi truck project. Then Doug showed Sam how to properly detail and polish the paint on the Celine Mustang. Sam and Julie buttoned up the fuel system on the Chevy Hemi truck and then fired it up for the first time. Then took us on a walk around the truck recapping the project. 